Ever feel like you're operating from paycheck to paycheck? It's okay, it happens to all of us. Like me, in my 20s, 20 years ago. That's why we're here today to talk about budgeting. But first, welcome back. My name is Nan and I'm the content creator behind Mompreneur Life, where I express opinions about lifestyle products, talk about making money online, and vlog about life as a mommy entrepreneur. And in my 20s, I did not have a budget. Every month I spent way more than what my paycheck allowed. And then I got laid off from my first job. And when my severance ran low, I was in big trouble, as in I didn't know where rent was coming from. It was a lesson learned for me and hopefully it'll be a takeaway for you. So if you're ready to take the ring on your personal finances and start budgeting, then stick around. There are so many reasons to start budgeting. And of course, it depends on what your needs are. For me, it was financial security. When I was laid off and didn't have income, I was super stressed. Had I budgeted for savings, I would have been a lot better off. In addition to financial security, here are some other reasons. Number one is to have better spending habits. You don't have to be drill sergeant disciplined, but at least have a guideline to follow. Also, you wouldn't spend more than what you have and it mitigates you from borrowing too much that you can pay back and it hurts your credit. And also it lets you have a more comfortable retirement. If you get in the habit to budget for investment for the future, you will have less money worries when you're older. Of course, there are so many more reasons, but for time's sake, let's get into the budgeting. It's important to first understand what a budget is and is not. A budget is a tool and specifically an estimation tool. And like any tool, it works only if you apply it correctly. That is, if you apply it, at all. A budget is not something that you have to follow stringently. And what I'm trying to say is be agile. For example, if you spend too much in clothing, then try to spend less on food or going out with friends. Amounts on each line item can be moved around. And if you mess up once, then try to do better the next time. And also a budget is something personal and your budget is specifically for you. So budget according to your lifestyle, and not your friend. So if your friend has a few thousand dollars for traveling, that may not apply to you. There are various styles to create a budget with, but because this is your first time, let's make it as simple as possible. Remember that this is a tool for you and only you, and therefore there is no one to impress here. So pick a tool that you know how to use. I recommend something very simple like a piece of paper and pen or Word or Excel or Google Sheets. Basically anything that allows you to draw a table with rows and columns. Step number one is not to put line items and numbers yet, but to put the number one reason why you're creating a budget in the first place. In my example, I'm using Google Sheets and it goes right on top. To save up $10,000 in a rainy day fund, which is a fantastic reason for a lot of people. Then use very strong lines and draw a T-shape with the vertical line right down the middle. Now put your monthly income in one column, put your expenses in another. And now start adding some rows. For each row, give it a category. For example, your bi-weekly pay, and that goes in the income column. Do you freelance? That's income as well. Do you drive Lyft or deliver with Uber? Side hustles are income as well. Did you get a tax refund? That's income. Basically, any money received goes to income, even birthday money, if you want. Now, list all your expenses and put them in the expense column. That's all the money going out. Rent, mortgage, food, bills, a medical copay, insurance or money that you owe your uncle, total them up and see what you'll have left over. And hopefully that's a positive number because if it's not, it's time to really adjust your lifestyle. Maybe you don't need to spend so much on food or maybe you need a second job, but let's say that the leftover is positive. Now create three more line items and put 50% of that into savings. 30% for education and 20% for entertainment. And there you go, a beautiful list of income versus expenses. Now, this is why I recommend a spreadsheet because I can use the tabs. And in my example, I would copy the current tab and label the new one next month's budget. Now that there's a historical data to look at, let's make adjustments so we can meet our saving goal a lot sooner. For example, grocery was too high. Let's shave off a hundred and put it into savings. And guess what? I don't owe my uncle anymore. And that money is in saving too. All right, 
you get the idea. And in next month's budget, we're going to add a new column. We're going to name it actual, as in what we actually spent. And just in case, we're actually going to add another line and name it miscellaneous. Now we fast forward a month, we have our income fixed for the most part, our projected expenses and our actual expenses. And now we compare the two and we adjust again for the next month and so on and so on every single month. And there you go, a very simple first time budget. Again, there are so many reasons to create a budget, even for a small household or personal financing. With a basic tool that estimates the money coming in and the money going out, you're less likely to overspend and more likely to develop a good habit and save up for the future. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Just start and start small and see where it gets you. And that's it for today's episode of Finance Friday. See you next week.